Hi, it's Vicky here and today I design for Limor Weber Designs. Today I'm going to make a mixed media project and I'll be using this art journal. This is an art journal by Faber-Castell and as you can see I'm fighting with the packaging there. In the packaging you get the pages as well as three rings. So you can uh, bind your uh, mixed media journal at the end, once uh, you are finished. Now the pages are really nice and uh, the size that I am uh, using today is the mini uh, mixed media journal. As you can see there is another, the square one, which is slightly larger. Also, you can see that uh, the size is uh, about the same size as a standard card. So that's uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. There are six pages and I am going to work on the first one today. For my background today, I am going to use one of my favorite techniques. So I have uh, chosen uh, a couple of uh, pattern papers from this um, Prima collection. And I am going to use my paper trimmer to cut out small uh, pieces. Now, all the pieces are not the same size and I am cutting them randomly. I am uh, mainly focusing on uh, two pattern papers that are not very vibrant. So although they have some texture, they will not stand out at the background. And uh, as you can see, I have uh, chosen one that is uh, kind of bluish and another one that is uh, very pale but has some uh, green accents on it. So I am cutting out with my scissors in uh, smaller pieces and uh, once I'm happy with the amount of uh, the pieces that I have, I am going to start uh, sticking them on top of my page. I'll be using my brush and some um, matte medium to stick everything on top and uh, I am going to put some music and uh, meet you up once uh, all the pieces are uh, glued on the page. And as you can see, I have finished covering up all the page. I am using my heat gun to speed up the process of drying and I am going to use my scissors to cut out the excess. If you have already noticed, I made sure that I overlapped one uh, paper piece with another and this will create a great texture at the end. Finally, I am using my distress tool by Prima and uh, going all around the edges just to make sure that I have a nice and smooth edge. Now that everything is dry, I can uh, go ahead and do some shading. I'm using my favorite pit brush markers, these are the big brush markers, and I am going around the edges of the small pieces. This technique helps all the texture to uh, come forward and uh, all the little pieces will pop up, so you will end up with a nice mosaic for your background. And just because I wasn't uh, very happy with the light blue that I was using, I went ahead and chose another uh, big brush marker that will add even more uh, shading and uh, will help my texture to pop up even more. With this darker blue uh, marker, I am going around the edges, but I am also going uh, to add some brush strokes on the inside of my piece, just to uh, bring uh, more forward some of uh, those pieces. Now, notice how I have uh, close by a baby wipe. This really helps when uh, you want to blend this uh, ink, because you can add some moisture to your finger. So once I'm happy with uh, my outcome, I am going to leave this aside to dry and once this Indian ink will dry, it will dry permanent. So no matter what you do on top of uh, this uh, background, it will not move and or smudge. 
you might have also noticed that I have uh, covered up the holes that were in this uh, page that I'm working on. But uh, you don't need to worry about that. We will add those uh, holes at the end. Now I am using my black archival link and I am going to stamp this uh, flower three times. I am doing so because I have uh, three petals in this uh, flower and uh, I want to create a dimensional uh, effect at the end. And uh, I have uh, chosen to work on a Manila cardstock by Ranger, but you can really work on any cardstock that you like. I just love this uh, because it takes uh, paint really great. So now I'm using one of my Ising uh, inks. This is uh, the tomato color and I just love how vibrant this uh, red is. So I am adding just a bit of um, water there and with my brush I am going to cover up all the flowers. I'm not doing any shading at all, just basic coloring over the three stamped flowers as I will be doing all the shading at the end with my brush markers. What's great about uh, the paint that I'm using is that it's actually ink and it dries permanent so it will not move once it, uh, it's dry. Now also notice that that it's not very opaque. Oops, my cat wanted to taste that uh, red paint. Anyway, and as I was saying, the paint is, the ink actually, is uh, semi-transparent, so it doesn't cover up the lines from the stamping. And that's what, exactly what I wanted to have. I didn't want to lose all this detail. And uh, I have used my scissors, and as you can see, I have cut out the whole image once and a couple of petals. Uh, separately and now it's time to do some shading so I am using my pit, big pit brush markers by Faber Castell and I am adding uh, some red shading at the bottom of each petal as well as some uh, brown shading which uh, really makes the difference. This technique, as I have already uh, said in previous uh, videos, does not work on non-porous surface and although I'm working on a paper at the moment, it is not a porous surface and that's because I've used icing ink to color the petals. This actually turned them into a non-porous surface. I'm also using my marker around the edges to get rid of uh, that um, manila color and uh, I will uh, continue adding some shading until I'm happy with the outcome. And before I stick them on my background, I want to make sure that I have some dimension. So I'm just uh, using my marker there to add uh, a curl on the petals. And I am going to use some matte medium to stick them together. So this will uh, actually create a three-dimensional flower, as you can see here. Now, I have also went ahead and used one of my fine line uh, applicators. This is one. And I have in inserted some uh, gel medium inside. So you can see that you, all you have to do is to unscrew the white uh, cap, not the bluish one just like I'm doing here, and pour in your uh, matte medium. Having some uh, gel medium or matte medium in a fine tip applicator like this one really makes uh, the job easy, especially when you want to apply it in a very small area. But you will notice that I will continue to use the jar as is and apply some uh, gel medium with my brush because uh, it's a great uh, way to apply when it's a big uh, surface that you want to cover up. So once my petals and my flower is uh, assembled, I am going to pinch at the bottom and uh, because I don't want to waste my time and uh, keeping it uh, like that until it dries, I am going to use a paper clip to hold it down and I am going to work on the stem of the flower. So first of all, I'm going to stamp the stem. Again, I'm using archival ink, black archival ink, and uh, I'm stamping it uh, once on a another cardstock just like I did with my paper. Of course you can uh, go ahead and stamp it uh, directly on your page but I kind of like the texture that you get when uh, you stick uh, papers on one on top of the other. So anyway I'm using again my Ising uh, ink. This one was the bamboo green I believe. In any case I am going to link everything that I'm using just below the video in the details area as well as on my blog. So after I have uh, applied some uh, color there, I'm using my heat gun to speed up the drying process. And then I'm going to use my scissors to cut out all the little stems. Now this uh, is a job that uh, uh, you have to do only if you really love uh, cutting uh, little pieces with your scissors. As I mentioned, you can always stamp uh, the stems directly on your page. Or you can use your brushes and uh, just uh, draw a stroke for the stem. 
So now I'm using again some uh, gel medium to stick uh, all the stems down. And once everything is there, I am going to use my big brush markers to add some shading. I am using my scissors to cut out all the excess and uh, now I'm going to use my big brush markers to add some shading. Before you go ahead and do this step you need to make sure that all the gel medium is totally dry or you will ruin your uh, big brush markers. For shading around the flower I'm using a, a couple of shades darker green than the one that I have on the stem and I'm going around the, the stems. I'm also going to use a really dark green to add some shading. And finally I'm going to use the exact same technique with blue markers around the flower. Notice how I can go back with a baby wipe and remove some ink if I feel that I have added too much. You can do that but you need to move quickly before it dries because if, you, if the ink dries it will uh, dry permanent. This is a huge uh, stencil by Donna Downey and of course I can't use that on uh, this small project so I decided to use just uh, one word out of it and I decided to use the word love. I am using some post-it notes around the word just to make sure that I won't get any accidents and uh, with my spatula I am going to apply some whipped spackle. So I'm going white on uh, this uh, stencil and uh, you'll see that at the end I am going to change my mind but uh, I'll talk about that decision at the end. So anyway, I have my word uh, in my project there. And um, now I'm adding some details at the edges. This is a stamp by Limor Weber Designs. This is just one of the stamps that come in a set that's called Rugged Edges. And uh, they are all great for adding details on your mixed media projects. So I'm using my big brush markers to add some ink and then I stamp uh, away all around the edges. And if you notice, I'm using both green and uh, blue marker. Once I was happy with the texture that I've added with uh, this stamp, I decided to add even more uh, texture and dimension with another stencil and uh, I am going to use again some whipped spackle and add some uh, details on my background here and there. This stencil has great designs and uh, really adds texture to your backgrounds and uh, what I really love is that it's so versatile that uh, you can use it in pretty much every mixed media project that you do. Another one of my favorite techniques is adding highlights on my projects. So I am using my favorite uh, gel pen. This is Signo White Gel Pen by Unipol. And I'm adding some highlights on uh, the petals, the stems, everywhere pretty much. But notice that uh, I can always go back with a baby wipe and wipe off all uh, the excess if I feel that I have added too much uh, highlights on uh, my project. It's so easy to wipe off. And it's just so easy to do because I'm working on a non-porous surface. If I was working on a plain paper, I wouldn't be able to wipe off the gel pen. So finally, I'm going to use some gesso. 
I have already loaded my brush with water so I can do the splashes easily and notice how I'm using a fine uh, brush and that's because I want to have uh, small uh, splashes. If you want to have bigger splashes use a bigger uh, brush but just because my project is so small I didn't want to have any big splotches here and there on my project. I'm also going to add some uh, splashes with this green. This uh, ink is actually by Liquitex and I am going to link uh, the color at uh, the bottom in the details area as well as on my blog and uh, after that I am going to add some splashes with uh, a blue ink which is by Eyes Ink actually. I am making sure that I am staying on uh, the sky with the blue splashes and I, when I used the green ink I stayed at the bottom at the grass. And although you might not be able to tell at the moment on uh, the video where those uh, splashes actually are, I trust me they are there and they really add great um, texture on the project. This is uh, the point where I decided that uh, the love word wasn't uh, really standing out. So I decided to go over it with uh, black embossing powder just to help it stand more on uh, my project. I am planning to work on this uh, mixed media journal and uh, create uh, pages with flowers. This is a great way to use my flower stamps and I can create a different flower composition for each page. So that's, that pretty much finishes the project for today. I am going to use my crop dial to add the holes back there and uh, then I can um, use the rings and uh, bind all the art journal together. Once I'm uh, ready to work on another page I can just uh, open up the rings and uh, pick up uh, the next page. And that was the project for today, I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Here are some close-up photos of the project where you can actually see the splashes as well as the texture. If you want more inspiration, you can click any of the images on screen and just watch the video on how I created these uh, three mixed media tags. Make sure to subscribe on my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already and thank you all for joining me today.